Hey team, welcome to the Step Outside YouTube channel. If you want to see more fishing action just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey everybody, welcome to Step Outside. Just getting the tackle ready for our next fishing adventure. Here's what's on today's lineup. We head to the world's largest sand island, Fraser Island, and fish the west coast. I'll give you the inside tips on cast netting for live bait. Big brim, is it a reality? How's the scenery here? We have just crossed the parts of Fraser Island that houses sand blows, perched lakes, and even rainforests, only to be greeted on the western side of silica white beaches and crystal clear and calm waters. Now we did pass a few trucks on the way back. It has been a long weekend, so a lot of these areas could have been hard hit by anglers, but as long as you've got a line of the water, luck is always on our side. Yeah, this is it. I remember this spot when I was a kid called Rally Creek. It was about a kilometre further down the beach. But over the years, it has eventually moved to the uh, south. But nonetheless, it's housing a lot of fish. Through the polarised sunglasses, I can see bait fish. And here on Fraser Island in Queensland, you can use a cast net. So I'm going to use that particular method to catch my bait fish, and then I'm going to soak them along this leading edge. And I have to say, there's got to be something in this water that's just going to have scales that'll be wanting the bait that I feed out to it. Let's get into the gear and I'll show you what I'm using. This is my net. It's a 10 foot monofilament net. And I think this is going to be more than enough to get a, a bit of bait. Now I don't want to go out there and get a hundred bait fish. I want to just get enough that's going to be doing the job for me for what I need at hand, and that is just a few. So, all I do, gather it up, nice and easy, grab the closest leads to you, get half in there, up here, grab the closest one to you. Watch this, straight out and over, just like so. I always urge anyone out there who does cast to make sure that if you haven't done it for a while, just do a practice cast straight away. So I've got my net, gathered it up, we're ready to go, and I've got a bucket that's going to catch some bait. God, this looks good. Alrighty, so, look at that. I only wanted four or five, and that's exactly what I got. There's a lot of bait out there. There's no need to go and get a lot if you're not going to use it straight away. When I need more, I can come and get more straight away. Beautiful looking baits. Let that dry off. Alrighty, let's have a look at the gear. Now, those who watch the show a lot know that I love using the dual rod, the Shimano dual rod. It's a, a beautiful outfit. I'm using the one to four kilo spin stick. It's a one piece and I've got a 2500 Stratic on here. Okay, so Dona 2500 would be right and also a Sienna would be okay as well. I'm running a size 2 split shot going down to a 2.0 mustard chemically sharpened octopus hook. I'm running 12 pound braid with 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. This outfit is nice and light. It's a beautiful stick and when I bait this particular fish up, which I'll show you when I get closer to the water, I want to get there into the corners. I need to look for the bait. You always hear us talk about bait fish in locations. Find the bait, you'll find the flathead. Find the bait, you'll find the snapper. Find the bait, you'll find the marlin or even the bass. The list goes on. It's all about bait. I know there's a lot of bait in there. I haven't disturbed it yet. I caught my bait just out the front here. So let's go and uh, hit this spot, hit this corner and see if we can catch a few fish. 
looking fishy. One thing I do like to take with me when I am walking the banks for flathead or any particular good fish is I like to take some fish lip grips with me. These are the mustards. I like these for the simple fact is, if you're in a boat or off the bank and you drop them in the water, they float. They cost a few bucks, but I'll tell you what, you're not gonna lose them. So what I'm looking at here is all of these waters spread out, they sort of push out like a finger. But this is the deeper water here. There's a little bit of weed, but I do see a lot of bait. So what I'm gonna do is just basically hook this bait up, drift it straight in close. I'm not gonna cast it out too far. I'm not gonna disturb that water. So wherever you are around the country, remember that if you're at a barrage up north and maybe some rock cliffs down south, don't disturb the water before you are ready to actually get out there and have a flick with it. Because if you do, it's a good chance you'll spook the fish. Come in close and I'll show you how I rig up this hardy head. So I've got my tour hook. I don't want to go too big of a hardy head. That's a beautiful one. There, I like him. So all I do here is you always grab, whatever bait you're using is grab right behind the gills. So part of your finger is on the gill plates so he can't bend his head forward or back. Place pressure around the back of him and then just get that hook underneath his jaw and just push through like so. And that will be an absolutely ideal bait. Now he'll flick around like that and attract any flathead or any brim or anything in the local waters here. Just gonna flick him out. So just slowly winding in allows you not only to cover more ground, but to get your fish or your bait right inside that fish's zone, right into his head, where he's sort of waiting here for any small fish to be pushed out. You want to slowly bring it in. A bait cast is a really good idea here. You've got direct feel, direct line. God, there's a lot of bait out there. If you've got a bucket of live bait and you don't have an aerator with you, be sure to change it every 10 minutes or so with clean, fresh ocean water. Just keep doing that and your bait will help to stay alive over the next 10 minutes or so. More bear hooks, I'm glad I've got a little bit of bait. There's always so much bait here, I can easily get a, a bit more if I need it. But these creeks, they just feather out onto this whole beach, all through here. There's so much ground to look at and work. Time to put another bait on. With plenty of bait in the bucket and the tide about to turn, it really is endless, from Coongal Creek through to Aurora Rally. Of course, a Winya and Bawarity. The list goes on, and there's no shortage of places to wet a line. But before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about Fraser Island. Now 75 mile beach, Fraser Island is known for its fishing. From Taylor through to Flathead, Whiting and even Mackerel, four wheel driving is high on the list. If you don't have one, you can't simply get onto the island. But wetting a line is what it's all about. So my recommendations, a good quiver, two to four kilo and four to six spin. You won't go wrong. Stick around after the break. The granddaddy of Brim comes out to play.
So Kenny, how does it feel, your first flatty on a hardy head up here? Excellent, really exciting Paul, really great. Cool. First fish on Fraser. Well there you go mate. That? Well we've got a bucket full of bait, you got the right branding shirt on. Really that's good. good. Yeah, that's <laughs> he's good. He's good. You're, oh. looking, you're looking more like a racing car driver. You've got that many sponsors on you, but anyway. Yeah. Well, you, do you want to keep him? First of the day. No, we'll let him go. No, okay. not, not at all. It was great catching him. Let's go for another one. Just a few little fish jumping around the water here. Such a diversity of fish around here from flathead to whiting to little cod. Massive tuna just belting up beyond that little bit of a break. To fish like this, monster brim, have a look at that. Have a look at that for a brim. Absolute gorgeous fish and, and that's a stonker if I must say so myself. That's a cracker of a brim. Oh my goodness, fishing here, it really does pay off. If you are coming up to Queensland, of course, at the moment, things are pretty tough around the country, I get that. But look, when things reopen, put this on your bucket list and come up here because serenity and it's quiet and there's hardly anyone around on this side of the island and you just have it all to yourself. It's so pretty and fish like that. Just nail that hardy head. And there's so much bait fish here. Again, find the bait, find the fish. It's just a simple old way of fishing and it really has never changed. The brim has telltale signs of these dorsal fin spines here. You've really got to be careful of these in particular. It'll easily get you. And also down around here. And of course these anal fins, but the gill rakes are pretty sharp. But at the main time, this particular fish here, it's more like a snowy brim. So we get a lot of these in winter and they are really clean. It's not a river brim where they get dirty and dark. This is a real clean ocean brim. All right, buddy, thank you. Go and tell your friends that we really looked after you and tell them to come and bite our baits. <laughs> that is so much fun. Tell you what, there's just not enough hours in the day. Unreal. Here's some tips for light tackle live baiting. A light two to four kilo spin combo is ideal. 2 0 octopus hook, a size two split shot sinker. Hook the fish under the jaw and out through the nose and fish the runoffs. And remember, when you feel the bite, count to 20 before striking. Good luck. Hey team, thanks for watching the Step Outside YouTube channel. If you want to see more fishing action like this, remember to like comment, add, subscribe. Keep up to date with what's happening in your neck of the woods and our neck of the woods. It's going to be great viewing, great watching. It's all coming up on the Step Outside YouTube channel. Take it easy.